Hey everyone, I am in Leadville, Colorado at the Evergreen Cemetery and we're here to visit one man. And so let me show you who we're talking about. This town is about 10,000 feet above sea level. And I'm really surprised to see so many fences in this cemetery. And this cemetery is far larger than what I thought it would be. But we're here to visit this man right here. This is John Baker Omohundro. And his nickname was Texas Jack. He died June 28th, 1880 at the age of 39. And it looks like it says it was erected by William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill, John M. Burke, and Johnny Baker. Pretty neat right here. Uh, grave number 13 looks like. I don't think there's anyone else in here. There's a stand over there for wreaths, but it's got beads on it. And you can see a uh, foot marker there with his initials. And there's a little figurine right there, a little lady. Uh, almost looks like a Hispanic figurine or something. You can see um, maybe a washer there. Um, piece of coffee mug or something like that. Quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies. And they are also down around and through here with different colorful rocks and painted rocks. Um, that little jar right there has got something in it, but I don't know what. Been there a while. There's pieces of metal over there for like flag hangers, silk flowers, and a flag. That's another painted rock down there. There's marbles, all sorts of things. And then here we have a uh, gover government marker. John Baker Omohundro. Private in Company G, 5th Virginia Cavalry. And uh, it says Confederate States Army. July 26, 1846 to June 28, 1880. Pretty neat to see his uh, grave here. As you can see, there's a border outline of stones around it. Very much an Old West feel there. And there is a gate to get in there, but we're going to be respectful and stay out of there. There's no reason for us to get in there, so we can see everything right here. John Baker, Texas Jack Omohundro, was born July 26, 1846, to John B. and Catherine Omohundro, who were both wealthy landowners. He had hints of Powhatan Indian blood and was considered by many to be a handsome man of exceptional physique and muscular strength. He was an expert with a horse, lasso, and gun, but was never a desperado. Jack left home at the age of 17 and made his way to Texas where he became a ranchman and cowboy. It was there that he gained his nickname Texas Jack after a spirited cattle drive through Indian Territory to bring meat to Arkansas. He became a scout in the Confederate cavalry under Colonel Jeb Stewart. After the war, he rode as a government scout, crossing paths with Buffalo Bill Cody. Buffalo Bill admired Jack's skill as a horseman and marksman, and the two quickly became friends. He made his home in Cottonwood Springs, and he also spent considerable time as a buffalo hunter. Together, he and Cody acted as guides for the Army and were involved in several Indian skirmishes together. In December of 1872, Jack appeared in Buffalo Bill's debut of The Scouts of the Prairie in Chicago, Illinois, produced by Ned Buntline. Jack continued to work in the show, and he was the first performer to introduce roping acts. The next year, Wild Bill Hickok joined the show. In the off-season, Jack ran cattle and guided frontier excursions for European royalty, including the Grand Duke Alexis of Russia and the Earl of Dunraven. While touring, Jack met the world-renowned dark-eyed beauty, actress, and dancer Guseppina Antonia Morlacci, who went by Josephine. She also became a performer in the Wild West shows. The two fell in love and got married. By 1877, Jack was heading his own acting gig in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as writing articles about his hunting and scouting experiences. He and his wife moved to Leadville, Colorado in March of 1880. Josephine took the Leadville stage by storm, playing in The French Spy and The Black Crook. 
Texas Jack joined Tabor's light cavalry, but soon fell ill with a cold which took a serious turn to pneumonia, bringing his untimely death at the age of 33. The inconsolable Josephina left her acting career to nurse him to the very end. The town gave destitute Texas Jack a soldier's funeral at Leadville's Evergreen Cemetery. It was complete with an elegant coffin, military guard of Tabor's light cavalry, brass band, and services at the Tabor's Opera House. A plain wooden marker marked his grave with a pair of crossed pistols and a horse head sketched on the back. Josephine never recovered from her grief and she never appeared on stage again. She retired in seclusion in Massachusetts where she died at the age of 39 from cancer. In 1908, Buffalo Bill installed a large granite stone and led a legendary ceremony for one of his dearest friends that gathered hundreds from the town along with rough riders, cowboys, soldiers, and Indians from his Wild West show. During his life and after his death, the legend grew in many dime novels, magazines, and articles. In 1910, Buffalo Bill described him. He was an expert trailer and scout. I soon recognized this and secured an appointment with the United States Service. In this capacity, I learned to know him and respect his bravery and ability. He was a whole-souled, brave, generous, good-hearted man who was one of my dearest and most intimate friends. In 1994, Texas Jack was inducted into the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is certainly my kind of cemetery with all these fences, but my time here is limited and then we must get on the road. So thanks for joining me on this little cemetery adventure. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit of something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.